Good morning once again, welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to give you a short video and tutorial on finding the center of a turning blank. Now ordinarily as a wood turner we have certain ways of doing that but as an old woodworker you may discover a couple other methods that might be very useful. So let's take a look. Okay, what you are looking at are three woodworking marking gauges. Sometimes they're called mortising gauges and that sort of thing for laying out uh, mortises and tenons. This particular one is store-bought. Okay, it's got a couple points right here for laying out a mortise and you'd set your chisel to that. It's got one on this side here and you can adjust this wherever you want it. Well, let's take a look at a couple more. This is one of my favorites. Ha. It's just a couple pieces of wood. I've got a dowel stuck in there. And that dowel has a wedge shape on it. So you put that in the hole and that tightens down your marking gauge. It's just got a dowel going through the center and I've also got a little flat on the top right there. On this particular marking gauge I've got a drill bit which is very hard. I've got that file down to a point or kind of a knife edge that I can use. Now having a knife edge or a point made out of steel provides for a sharper and more accurate line than a pencil. It's also got a pencil in it. Let's just uh, do a little bit of marking with this particular gauge. So I want to find the center of this piece of wood right here. So I just mark right there. And I turn that around and mark from the other side. Now that particular dimension was right in the center of my piece of wood. So that's how that works. Now you may not have these particular tools and that's okay. Let's say I want to find the center of this little piece of bubinga. All right. I just take my pencil, take this finger as kind of a, a gauge that's going to remain constant. So I mark from one side, I turn that piece of wood around, and I mark from the other side. Now you'll see that I'm a little bit off, so I need to adjust my finger. Right there. And right there. And that gets you a little bit more in the center. Now the last video I did, I was doing the, the birdhouse ornament. And my lines were a little bit off. I actually had two lines in there. So all you have to do is take a scratch all split that difference. Now here's that clip from my last video and you'll notice that I've got lines scribed in there with the cutting edge of steel that is and I can actually see those a little bit easier in this very hard dense wood. Now whatever method you use it's a good idea to take a scratch all. You can use a nail and I'm going to just put a point right in here There we go. Making this little indentation is a good idea when you're starting to drill a hole. You know, my birdhouse ornament, I made a couple holes in line, and that's very important because you can't drill those holes on a round piece of wood. You want to do it here when it's square, you can find the exact center. Now I'm going to mark this particular little piece of zebra wood. I'm going to just uh, kind of guesstimate where the center of that is lock down my tool. So I'm going to make a, a mark from that side, turn it around, make a mark from this side. And when I get back to my computer I'll give you a real good close-up of that. I've got two lines that are maybe just shy of an eighth of an inch. If you are cutting something on your bandsaw or your table saw, sometimes it's a better idea to have these lines a little bit farther apart from the center and you can line up your saw blade very easily and just split the difference with that line. Now since I don't have a table saw anymore 
I'm going to demonstrate this one aspect on my bandsaw. I've got the guide raised way up. I'm not going to turn this on by any means. Here's my piece of spalted tamarind. And I've got my line on there, or lines, if you will. One of the reasons I don't try to put a center line on, if you have a pencil, then that line becomes rather wide. And this is, to me, more accurate. So I've got that lined up with my bandsaw blade here. And I hope you can see the blade just splits that line. I've also got a mark on the top of this blank of wood. And I can see exactly where that blade is going to cut. So, good tip. Now this view is dead on to my bandsaw blade. And you can see how the bandsaw blade splits those two lines. And it's very easy to line that up. It's very accurate. It's difficult to get extreme accuracy in wood because, well, it moves and warps. And uh, This works for me. You may have other methods that uh, work for you. Let's take a look at this tool. I showed that in my last video. Purple Heart. I've got a brass inlay right in here. I made this tool. I've got a threaded insert that I screwed into the center of that piece. I've got a little lock nut. And I don't know where I got that, but it looks a little bit like it's from a piece of furniture. So I put that in here. If I want to mark the center of this piece of bubinga, I'm going to just get that close by eye. One approach I take when I'm doing this, I'm not real concerned about getting two lines right in the center. That's not the point. So let's just uh, mark this right in there. Okay, I think you can probably see that. We'll just turn that around. You can adjust your tool and get closer to the very center. For some applications, this is good enough. So I'm going to just take my scratch all and eyeball that. There, there you go. I may be off a 64th of an inch. It doesn't matter. Maybe some things do matter. So there's some ideas on marking and measuring. I've got another video on marking and measuring and I'll put that up and uh, you can kind of check that out. Well, Saved by the Bell once more. Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you next time.